Welcome everyone. This is the first video tutorial of the tutorial series data analysis and predictive modeling. In this video, I'm going to talk about why do we need statistics. And we are going to discuss some basic idea of some statistical concepts in practice. So let us start by answering the question that what statistic is. So suppose that we know nothing about statistics, consider it to be a black box. Now inside this black box, if you put some data, then it's going to return you some useful information. Now what goes on behind this black box is a scientific techniques to discover knowledge. So statistics can be considered as a field that converts data into knowledge. Now let's answer this very interesting question that why do we at all need data? Now consider a problem. This is Praveen, a mango seller. Now Praveen has been observing that his sales for the demand for his mango has been, has been increasing over the past few years. Now he is unable to figure out that how much mango shall he order in this year that will meet the demand of his customers. Now, if Pravin's choice is such that the demand meets the supply, then definitely he is going to walk away with the maximum profit. However, if the demand is greater than the supply or the demand is less than the supply, then Pravin loses the opportunity to make the maximum profit. In fact, he may also run into loss if his choice is not proper. Now consider that Pravin has maintained our data. Now, he has started selling mangoes from the year 2010 when he sold 200 kgs of mangoes and lately in 2014 he sold 800 kgs of mango. Now, take a look at the data and see if you can figure out what, how much mango shall Pravin order in 2050 based on the records that he has maintained for the last five years. Okay, well, now based on this hypothetical data, we can see that the quantity of mango sold got increased by 150 kg every year. So if this trend continues, then in 2015, the expected uh, sale of mango is going to be 800 plus 150 is equal to 950. Kg. Now, if I look this data visually, then he has started selling in 2010 with 200 kgs of mango. It rose up to 350. Then it rose up to 500 in the year 2012, which rose up to 650 in 2013 and 800 in 2014. So, if this trend continues, then in 2015, extending this straight line we can get 950 kg for the year 2015. So the data helped to give an answer to his question. However, understand that in real life, we can hardly get a trend like this. Nothing is this much straight in the real life. And this brings us to the very important question, why statistics? Probably province data is irregular like this. Now in that case, it is difficult to predict that what the value of the sales going to be in the coming year. So is it going to go straight like this? It's going to go up or it's going to go down. Now it's difficult to think it out. However, if we are making a prediction based on the straight line that we have seen in the last graph, we are making some error. For example, in, instead of 300, in, for example, in the year two, two, 2011, instead of 300, we are actually predicting that 350 mangoes have been sold. So the error is equal to the difference between these two amounts. And let me tell you one thing over here, that whenever an error creeps in the process, the only subject that can handle error 
is statistics. And this particular problem in statistics is called the problem of prediction. Now let us consider another example. A doctor is on for preparing a new medicine that will heal the headache. Now with his expertise he knows that chemical A and chemical B is going to play a pretty good role in curing headache. Now he has also found out that there is a chemical C that also acts a very good in curing headache. Now the problem with chemical C is that it suppresses the effect of chemical A to some extent. So the important questions that to be asked over here is that how much of chemical A, B and C are to be used to make the medicine effective? And what quantity of these chemicals should be used so that the effectiveness of this medicine will be optimized? Now here understand one thing that the doctor is not preparing the medicine for just one person. He is preparing the medicine for many people and understand that each of this person is different. They are different with respect to age, they are different with respect to sex, they are different with respect to all other, other biological aspects. This brings in the process tremendous amount of errors. And again, the only subject that can handle error is statistics. But how do statistics deal with error? Now here understand that error is anyway unavoidable. What statistics does is that it designs techniques that helps in the reduction of error to the minimum level and leaves us with a solution which is not error free but is associated with the minimum amount of error. The next problem of statistics that I want to discuss is the problem of estimation. Now we are always bound by constraints, may it be time, may it be budget, may it be limitations of instruments or the limitation of labors. Now all this constraint does not allow us to reach each and every, every unit to the fullest. For example, consider this problem. My objective is to calculate or estimate the average household income of all these houses in a particular geographical region. Now ge geographical region is a big region. Now it is not possible for me to reach each and every house and ask for their household income for whatever reason it may be. It can be time, it can be money, it can be uh, limitations of labor, or it can be anything. The one of the method that we can use is that we can select a smaller subset of household randomly from this larger set of households, record each household income and calculate the mean. And based on this mean, I can actually estimate the household income of the larger set. So this is the beauty of statistics. We are not required to reach each and every houses of that larger geographical area. We can select a few of them, calculate and rec record the income and calculate the mean from them. And then based on that we can actually make estimations for the larger set. In the coming videos we are going to discuss more of it and we are going to learn how to handle data and more importantly how to make a proper interpretation based on the result of any statistical technique that is applied to a data. So keep watching, have a very good time and enjoy learning. Thank you very much.